The SKS-45 is a gun that went into service right at the end of World War II, and it was out of production by 1958. And it wasn't the Russian gun itself that made such an impact, but the guns made in places like China and Yugoslavia that are all over the world today. Sergei Simonov's auto carbine has certainly not captured the, the spirit and the imagination of the Eastern Bloc world and its legacy the way that the Kalashnikov automatic rifle has. But the SKS, as it's known, is nevertheless a critical part of the history of the Cold War, although its history is firmly grounded in its origins during the Second World War. Because the cartridge, it was designed to fire, 7.62 by 39, the M43 cartridge was developed under the exigencies of the Soviet Union's war against Germany. And that cartridge developed under wartime conditions, developed so that it could feed a light machine gun that would ultimately become the RPD, and a semi-auto rifle that would ultimately become the SKS. Uh, that cartridge was really forward-thinking in a way. And this brings us to a fascinating point because there is typically little recognition for the fact that Soviet arms designers were among the best in the world and right at the cusp of the cutting edge. To me, the SKS is quintessentially Russian in the sense that it is so durably built, simple, uh, effective within its parameters, uh, its original design parameters. And what's not known widely is that the design concept for the action itself, which is this sort of tilting block that butts the bolt in, uh, with a sort of a, a dovetail fitting, was all designed on an anti-tank rifle. In that span of time between the end of World War II when the Simonov rifle, the, the new Simonov SKS appeared, and the time it was replaced by the Kalashnikov, which was a, a quantum leap, really, over the Simonov rifle, though it used the same cartridge. The Russians disseminated the SKS throughout the entire Eastern Bloc and throughout the communist world. Why? Because it was simple, it was reliable, it was peasant proof, it worked, and the Russian guns especially were beautifully made. The Russian SKS was developed in 1945, began manufacture, and is one of the most prevalent firearms in the uh, Eastern Bloc. Millions and millions, over 11 million, I believe, have been manufactured in that period of time. It's the, the first gun uh, to use the 762 by 39 cartridge that is currently used in the AK-47, which is a derivative of the SKS. The SKS has a, a, a fixed internal magazine loaded with a, a stripper clip and bears many of the, uh, the functioning features that uh, its inventor Simonoff had put into the design that kind of harkened to the, uh, the German MP pistol line that began with the, uh, the MP43 in, in 44. It's a ubiquitous. Uh, gun of communist revolutionary uh, application. Any place the Soviets tried to uh, advance their interests by sending arms, got them. The SKS should be really considered a central character in the ideological confrontation that we remember as the Cold War, because in every single flashpoint of the Cold War, from Syria to Serbia, the SKS is there. From Budapest to Bulgaria, the SKS is there. The SKS is fighting Americans in Vietnam. Uh, the SKS is arming 
Soviet units, it's arming Albanian units and Hungarian units and Czech units. It's, it's, it's really got this omnipresence through the Cold War that I often like to remind people we must remember. We must remember that there was something other than just the Kalashnikov. And it really is a fine rifle. It's a sweet shooting gun. It has negligible recoil. It's very reliable, has good sights, has a nice wooden stock that you can hang on to. It's not like a, these wire, wire stocked or monstrosities. It's a, it's, a, it's a real rifle. It feels like a rifle should feel.